How's it going, guys? It has been a while since my last video. I apologize for that. Um, you know, the hurricane came through and kind of messed up my condo. I've been without my good microphone. But I decided to make an exception and do a quick video here with uh, my crappy headphone microphone because, uh, honestly, this is, you know, I figure pretty important. And I am really surprised that I still see people out there who don't understand this. So I'm going to give a brief little breakdown of fundamentals here on TOPS and the offerings they've done the past couple of months and just the implications of it all and why these offerings are so toxic compared to a normal offering. Um, for some of you, this might be really basic, but for others, I think it'd be good to hear. Uh, so TOPS, uh, you know, we had that huge run back in early November, and then on our giant gap down day here, they announced an offering. And that was with a new group called Creed LG, I believe. Um, basically, you can consider them the new Kalani. And uh, I had hammered it short pre-market this day uh, in the 180s. I added the next day into the little morning spike up to 110. And I had one more ad in there on um, this day where it gapped and crapped. Um, I think those ads were in the 70s somewhere. Um, but I wound up with over 100,000 shares short and covered them all up in the 40s, uh, probably 46, 47 area. And uh, it was, you know, my best trade ever, really. I mean, I had my Fannie Mae Day back in 2014 when I uh, made over 200,000 in a day, but that was over the course of multiple trades. And really, this was just one big top trade. And I netted over 110,000 on it. I can't remember the exact number now. I had it between two accounts. But uh, it was my single biggest win ever on uh, you know one single trade, and I do I do count it as one single trade since you know it was a short and then two ads along the way, um, but I never closed any of the shares out. Um, but a lot of people were kind of curious, you know, like oh why did I hold it for so long? Because I mean I was in from this day right here in uh, early November until. I mean, it was close to the end of the month. It was maybe one of these days in here somewhere that I finally got covered up the last of it. And I had started taking off little pieces, uh, you know, along the way. I think it took me about five days to cover, but the bulk of it came in the last day or two that I took off. Um, and, I mean, the conviction really came from the fundamental side of it, uh, these offerings that they do. And, I mean, they did them before in the past with Kalani. Uh, we've seen the same thing with Dries. And these things are just, grand slam opportunities when you get them. Um, so let's get down into why really quick. Um, let's go to otcmarkets.com. This is their filings page for tops. Um, there's plenty of places you can go to get this. I just go to otcmarkets.com because it's quick and easy for me. Uh, here is the most recent offering they put out. Um, they had one, you know, let me go to a page here that has more. This is the one they put out back on November 8th um, when I first started my first short. And the details you will find if you go into these offerings that are so important, and really you just take the time to read offerings when companies put them out to see this, but you're looking for shares that can be constantly issued at a discount of current market prices. Um, you know, a lot of the offerings you see are usually very straightforward uh, for companies. You know, it's like, oh, we'll do a million shares at $5 or 2 million shares at $3. You know, they have a price point in there. Uh, maybe they include warrants or convertible shares, but those are always or almost always convertible or exercisable at a flat number where they say, you know, a dollar a share, $2 a share, whatever. And that's important because you've got to think about the person on the other side of the deal. You know, the person who is getting that million shares at $5, let's say, uh, it's probably in their best interest to only sell those shares if the stock is $5 or higher, or they probably will lose money because they, they gave the company money to get those shares. And, uh, you know, keep in mind, these are shares that are being created out of thin air. So if the stock had 5 million shares outstanding previously, and they issue a million shares, there are now 6 million shares outstanding. And that's going to impact how the stock trades. That's going to impact the float. That's going to impact a lot of things um, in terms of how it moves. So that's the basic type of offering you see. And those, I mean, yes, they depress the stock price, but they're not catastrophic in most cases. Now, the reason why the offerings we see tops do and drives do, the reason those are catastrophic is because they don't have a set number. Uh, basically, they are always doing it at a discount. And I'm just going to blow through this really quick. You know, I, I take the time to read these usually, 
But I'm just going to search for uh, VWAP here because I want to uh, find the exact line that matters. Um, so bear with me while I scroll through this. Oh, I just saw it. Hang on a second. I went too far. So what they say here is that as they are issuing shares, and they're going to be doing $25 million worth of shares with Creed in this offering, they say the per share purchase price for the shares of our common stock, subject to a request notice, will be equal to the product of a discount factor of 91% multiplied by the lowest daily VWAP during the applicable purchase period. This is so key because what they are saying is that these shares will always be at a discount. So tops, I mean, let's let's take today as an example for tops. Let me just get this to a one day, couple minute chart really quick. And I'm gonna have to cheat and look at another screen here to tell you what the VWAP is. Um, if my internet will load this chart. So okay, right now Tops is actually ramping a bit. It's having a nice little ramp. Great, good for them. Um, right now their VWAP is at 29 and a half cents, I think. Yep, 29 and a half. But if you look back at what that filing said, uh, I think it said, yep, lowest daily VWAP. So the lowest daily VWAP right now on Tops uh, today, uh, it's not 29 and a half, but it's at 28 cents roughly. It's the lowest VWAP of the day, and they're saying they will give. Creed LG shares at a 91% discount of that. So 91% of 28 cents. So basically, Creed is getting shares for much cheaper than current market prices. And when you're Creed, what do you do with those shares? You sell them immediately. So that is part of the reason why Tops is getting just crushed and why we've seen drives get crushed. And, you know, any company that will do deals like this, um, because when they get these shares at a discount to market prices, you know, first of all, these are shares being poof created out of thin air. Uh, it's changing the share count to tops. And Creed can sell them pretty much anywhere and make a profit. Like they, they, they get them, they sell them the instant they get them. They get them, they sell them the instant they get them. It's just rinse and repeat over and over day after day. And the share count becomes higher and higher and higher. And the sellers continue to outnumber the buyers. So, I mean, when you think about a normal stock trading, you know, you've got the buyers on one side, the sellers on the other. A stock goes up when the buyers outnumber the sellers. Um, when you have a third party constantly dumping the shares they acquire in, it's going to make it very, very hard for the stock to go up. Um, because, I mean, again, these shares are just being created out of thin air. The share count is constantly increasing. Uh, so... I mean, you might say now, how did Tops have this run from 50 cents up towards 350 back in early November? And back then, the deal was over. They had announced on this little gap up day here in October that their deal with Kalani at the time was done. And they had the exact same structure with Kalani. You know, shares were getting issued at a daily discount of VWAP. Um, and so once that Kalani deal was done and that dilution was done, it gave Tops a chance to run. It, you know, it got rid of uh, a lot of that selling pressure on the ask. And we got a nice little short squeeze here for a few days. And then they started it right up again with a new company. Um, so, I mean, that's why spikes don't scare me on this. That's why I'm comfortable holding a short and swinging it. Because, you know, on the days where there are gaps up, um, like here it gapped up a bit, here it gapped up a bit, I mean, I was very comfortable just getting short more into those spikes um, as I saw stuffing action because I knew that those sellers were going to come in. I mean, Creed is not getting these shares to hold these shares. Uh, that would be a huge mistake on their part. They're getting them and they're selling them. Um, that's, that's how they make money on this. So Topps wins because Topps gets $25 million. Creed wins because Creed gets $25 million worth of shares at constantly decreasing prices so that they are always able to sell for a profit. So they come out ahead in these deals quite nicely. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to speculate on the number, but basically they give $25 million and they're getting back out of this uh, the equivalent of far more than $25 million uh, through their selling. So then when they announced that they were doing another one, um, you know, I, I guess that was earlier this week, Monday or Tuesday, whatever day the 11th was, um, they basically said, you know, oh, we're going to do another $25 million with Creed. So I, I was very happy to get right back into it. I, I shorted it again um, throughout that morning, and I have an average in the low 40s. 
and I'm waiting for them to do a reverse split on this, which should come any day now, I think, because, you know, that's been the pattern in the past, and I'm going to uh, cover it up after that, you know, into further fade. So one one thing I want to touch on also really quick is that uh, this day here where it had the little pop from 35 cents or whatever it was up towards the 50s, uh, over a couple of days it ran. And uh, I wasn't shorting that day. And the reason is that every now and then what tops will do is they'll put out these 6Ks um, in here saying, oh, we have, let's see, was it the 22nd they did it? They'll basically update you on the deal and say how much has been issued and sold. So uh, 16.8 million shares um, at this point. And they had $8.8 .8 million worth of shares remaining that they could sell. This was on the first deal. So this was on November 22nd. So when this little pop came in December here, um, a couple of weeks later, I wasn't really sure how much might be left out of that 8.8 .8 million. I knew they were getting towards the end and I was a bit concerned about that. I didn't want to get into a ramp and short and then have them announce a day or two later, oh, our deal is done. Because we've seen that in the past. We've seen them do little tricks like that. Uh, Drive did that at the end of their last run and had a nice gap up day. Uh, when they suddenly just canceled their offering and uh, some shorts got squeezed on that. But for tops, I think the risk is pretty minimal, at least right now, because the share count is getting so big. Uh, one other thing to pay attention to on tops, you know, we've been talking a lot about share count, is the fact that uh, Finviz and other sites like that are often wrong. Finviz has shares outstanding of 40.24 million right now. Uh, always go to the filings, guys, because if you go to the December 11th filing, um, where they did this newest offering, they say how many shares they have outstanding. And I'm just going to do a little control F again for outstanding and see if I can find where they say it, because I know they do. And it's definitely more than 40 million. Do, 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 scrolling through. Oh, right here. So common shares outstanding as of December 7th. So this was seven days ago, you know, before I'm making this video. And they had 59 million shares outstanding. So Finviz is off by 19 million shares at least and that's on week old numbers um so you really can't trust sites you can't trust sites like this uh like finviz yahoo finance um you've got to go to the filings guys especially when you got deals like this where shares are constantly being created and dumped into the market um now where was it so they said you know they're offering up to 25 million shares and we're going to be doing this at a discount um, they usually say somewhere how many shares will be outstanding after the offering. Um, I guess they haven't done that right here. Um, but it would just be an estimate in this case because they'd be estimating it based off of current market prices and what, you know, if all 25 million shares were issued today, what the current number of shares would be. Um, but in reality, the stock bleeds off and even more shares get issued. So this has been a bit rambly. I hope it gets the point across as to uh, why I love these trades. Uh, you know, the risks. Let's, let's talk risks really quick because I've been talking about why this is such a home run short for me. But, you know, there are risks. Uh, what could happen that could be bad? Um, I mean, they could do what Drive did and suddenly say, hey, we're canceling our offering. And let's see if I can find that on Drive really quick just to show you what that looked like that morning. Um, this has to go back further. But that that is always a risk. You know, some kind of news comes out like that where they say, hey, no more shares are going to be issued, and then stock gaps up. Um, oh, darn it, the six-month chart is too wide. We can't really see it in here. So, uh, I mean, you can't really see it, but I believe it was this day right here in August uh, where there was a big gap up. And then drives, it couldn't even follow through. There was no follow-through spike. It just was a big pre-market squeeze. And then just kind of turned into a bit of a gap and crap where it opened up and then just faded back. So it, it was definitely a brief amount of massive pain for some shorts and then faded off some. Um, tops, you know, along the rest of the way here, what else could they do? I mean, they they could get a spike uh, in the next few days here if they do finish up the few million dollars remaining on that first $25 million deal and put something out saying, oh, that offering is complete. You know, that might get a little bit of a dumb reaction from people being all excited the first offering is done not realizing the second offering is still going. Um, also, I've seen cases in the past between tops and drives where they release earnings and they try to make the earnings look really good by saying stupid shit about like the book value of their vessels and things like that. 
and you often will see a dumb pre-market or post-market spike based off of that. So, I mean, these are things that could cause the stock to pop, but then again, the selling pressure is still going to matter, and that is going to knock it right back down. So, for me, pops are ad opportunities, and they really excite me. Um, the only one really that could be borderline, like, scare me would be that situation that we talked about where they do just cancel the offering if they pull that move like drives did. Um, but I don't think there's high odds of that. And I, that's a risk I'm more than willing to take uh, because if that happens one time out of 10 or one time out of five, I'm still going to come out well ahead on these uh, plays. Um, so, I mean, if you're trading this on the long side, I mean, I kind of get it if you're trying to scalp at times, but you're still at a huge disadvantage because of that third-party seller on the offer who's dumping shares into you. Um, you know, I say that on a day where there was some bounce. You know, it's gone from a low of 26 today to a high of 37. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's that's a reasonable percentage move. Um, but I think that reality is going to set back in and knock this back down sooner rather than later. Um, but for the long-term holders or for the people who expect this to go back to $3, like, God, wake up. Um I mean, if if you just simply don't understand this, I hope you do now after this video lesson and after uh, hearing the reasoning behind why these are such horrible offerings for shareholders. Um, because we talked about how Tops wins, they get money. We talked about how Creed wins because they get shares constantly issued at a discount. Someone's got to lose. Everyone can't win in the market. And uh, the losers are the people who are buying this and holding it long term. Um, we mentioned Tops did deals with Kalani all over the past year before they started doing them with Creed. And they've done multiple reverse splits. And this is what that chart looks like. $80,000 split adjusted. 80000 guys. And right now we're trading at $0.35. Cents. And this is going to just keep on happening and keep on getting worse. Uh, let's, let's take a look at drives too because that's also, I'm sure, a hilarious number. Uh, 45000 no, 50,000. Eh, between 45 and 50,000. Right now, trading at 376, and Drive hasn't even issued shares since August. <laughs> so, I mean, you can you can hold and wait and think it's gonna come back, but as long as these deals are happening, if not, guys, and as soon as reverse splits happen, the pain only gets worse. So, I hope that this uh, wakes some of you up. I hope that this makes it clear that uh, you are just in for a world of hurt if you are taking a buy and hold approach with these. Um, I mean, we saw it with drives in August. I mean, even, even when they did suddenly say, oh, never mind, we're canceling the rest of our offering. I mean, it spiked a few dollars and it's been sideways for four months. So, and anyone who bought this thing, anyone who bought it before July is just hopelessly underwater. So that's preachy enough. That's definitely long enough. Um, I think it should get the message across, but leave a comment if you have any questions or if something wasn't clear. Like I said, this was rambly. I'm sure that something didn't get conveyed properly. Um, but yeah, I, just, I hope it helps, guys. I really do. Thanks for watching.